So welcome one more time to Medent Tutorials. If you are new, you might want to subscribe. If you're already here and you've been here already, Charlie, thank you. Thank you. So this is GMDC Viva Surgery. And this is a sample from the February 2022. So since we don't know how the nature of the exam is going to be, let's go to some of the questions that they were asked in February 2022. All right. We've already done with telemedicine. Now this is surgery. So let's start. Let's start. All right. So one of the questions they were asked is that the patient is diagnosed of intestinal obstruction and was vomiting profusely. So the question was calculate the fluid loss or the fluid deficit and how you will hydrate and then classify the dehydration. Classify the dehydration. So what it means is that before you can now rehydrate, you need to know the fluid loss. So fluid loss plus the maintenance will give you the amount of fluid to give or to rehydrate. All right. And of course, classifications, you know them, the mild, the moderate, and then the, what, the severity. And there are some factors you need to base, you need to base your answers on. All right. Or some parameters like the dry mucus, like the pores, like the capillary refill, like the skin tagger, like the ability to drink, the restlessness, the all of those things. So use that one to be able to classify your dehydration level. All right. Now someone has somebody was asked hernia and hydrocell, and they were asked to give their classifications. You know, hernia. Yes, hydrocell. Sometimes they can be very, very, very uh, similar. All right. So they want you to differentiate between them clinically, clinically, and of course, their classifications as well. So someone was given an X-ray of the or of the abdomen, intestinal obstruction. All right, and they were asked to describe it. Describe it. <laughs> describe it. Very important. So you should learn how to describe an X-ray of the small bowel or of the, or of the abdomen. So a woman who is a farmer comes with a swollen hand. What are you thinking about? So, swell, so this is just like swelling. All right. So swelling, what are some of the things that comes to your mind? Exactly. But over here, I want to advise you to add DVT to it. All right. I want to advise you to add DVT to it. Because normal DVT is mainly happens when you have a, a lower limb swelling. Okay. Then you can add that one as a differential. All right. So you can talk about your cellulitis and all kind of stuff. You can talk about them. And over here, it says she tells you that she is diabetic. Uh -huh. So what are you thinking about? So this could be a diabetic-induced cellulitis, isn't it? Something like that. So you should be able to uh, know what to look out for. So a woman was involved in a car accident. She didn't lose consciousness, but she complains of chest pain. I think in internal medicine, we're asked to differentiate between a chest pain uh differentials for chest pains isn't it so over here they're asking you differentials for chest pain especially after the person had had an accident okay your diagnosis and your differentials very important so differentiate between thyroid uh swelling and lymphadenopathy so basically neck swelling isn't it and then lymphadenopathy, distinguish between them. Now, what are your indications of blood transfusion? What means that at what point do you, do you have to transfuse blood? And what's the difference between a plasma and serum? You know, sometimes they'll ask you, uh, you want the packed cells. So they'll ask you, you want the whole blood, something like that. What is the differences between them? You need to know. And when do you do this? When do you do that? Very important. So we have an x-ray, and on the x-ray, there is air under the diaphragm. There is air under the diaphragm. What are your differentials? What are your differentials? Those who have been following my YouTube videos, we did, you know, x-ray of the chest. And we said, if you have an air under the diaphragm, especially on the right side, it is not a good thing. 
it is not a good because it is always an indication of what pneumo uh, peritoneum and you don't want to have that all right however what is the history what in the history will point to a duodenal ulcer so you should know what an ulcer is right and based on what they are describing you can say oh maybe there's what a perforation isn't it from the duodenal ulcer because perforation is also what a complication of uh, under treated ulcer now you did a laparotomy a laparotomy repair for a tip that's like typhoid perforation and the patient has fever and diarrhea post up what is your diagnosis what is your diagnosis so there's fever and there's diarrhea what are you thinking about what are you thinking about after having a laparotomy Okay. Now a man is brought to you with a cut on his leg at the ER. Okay. What stages will the wound go through to heal? In other words, the processes of what? Wound healing. What are they? Then why will there be a delay in wound healing? Some of them, they come with delayed wound healing. So why? What could be the cause of it? So if you understand the stages or if you know the stages, then definitely you can be able to tell why there will be delay in wound healing. So please get those things. Now, a man complains of bleeding per rectum. Bleeding per rectum. What are your differentials? So this one, there are a lot of it. There are a lot of it. There are a lot of it. All right. Define peritonitis. Give the signs and symptoms of peritonitis very important right because normally we have a lot of our patients who enter into this kind of what state having peritonitis as a result of what an abscess that was not well treated and leading to a whole lot of things all right identification of bones so some people are actually giving bones to identify some ribs some the femur all right those are the things that i heard from them so, and we were asked to talk about the fracture, classifications, complications, and in some cases, management. So, know your bones, the part of the bones. Know it, know it, know it. All right. Then what is a surgical drain? Surgical drain. You know, sometimes there's some questions, they are not really, really, really written in the books. Okay. But if you put your minds around it, I think you can find uh, something that is, you know, tangible for them to give you some marks. All right. So surgical drain, surgical drain, something that we put inside to drain, basically. So it's like a tube. It's like your uh, your catheters, right? Because it's like a tube that you put inside. It's a tube. But this time around, you want it to drain, like the NG tube that you put there. Uh -huh. You put it there, it will drain. All right, so put your mind around it and then let's see how it goes. All right, so please, if you're enjoying these things, do well to like, do well to share, and let people know that they can have these things. All right, and if you want more videos, please check on medentweb.com. All right, so basically, this brings us to the end of uh, the Viva sessions of surgery. And hopefully, I'll upload the next one. All right. Stay blessed.